Hey everyone, it's Jennifer. It is August 13th, 2015, um, Thursday afternoon. I haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I would come on here and I have quite a few things to share, so I'm going to try to keep to my point so this isn't the longest video ever. Um, okay, gastric bypass, let's focus on that. Well, actually, let's focus first on the plastic surgery. Plastic surgery is scheduled for Friday, November 13th, which is exactly three months from now. And it cannot have, what, is it three months from now? Yeah, three, seven, I can't count. Yeah, three months. Um, it can't happen fast enough. Like, I so, I scheduled it for November because I needed to work around my school schedule. Um, I needed to work around my boss's vacation time. Um, and November was a good fit and it fit in between holidays and it just worked out really well. Um, I'm no longer in graduate school. I ran out of financial aid, so I this sucks. I have like 20 something credits left. Um, and then I would have had my master's degree and I would have been a licensed counselor and I had to drop out. So technically, um, I mean, my boss's vacation is the end of August. Um, so it's in a couple weeks, and technically, um, I could have my surgery sooner. Um, due to financial situations, I financed my surgery, and they processed my paperwork in June, I think. So I've been paying on my surgery that I haven't had yet. Um, I'm making payments every month on the surgery that I have not had. So technically, I could have surgery sooner. Um, I've just rescheduled it so many times. November 13th is the fourth surgery date that I've had. Um, and I've rescheduled it so many times that it's just frustrating at this point to reschedule it again. But I'm very, very, very tempted to, um, primarily because I'm gaining weight at a ridiculous level to the point that I don't even understand it. Um, now, let me, let me preface this by saying... Um, I am fully 100% responsible for my behaviors, for, um, for anything that I'm about to say, um, and I want you to know that I'm just being honest and just being real. I am not one of those people who had surgery and then went to the flip side of the extreme and ate a completely vegan diet and exercise three hours a day every day and try to change everybody around me like um, I'm not one of those people I don't take pictures of me sweating on the gym and post them to Facebook like I'm not that girl <laughs> and I will never be that girl that to me is not a realistic lifestyle um, for me if it works for other people that's fine but this is what I find in this community you either are at one extreme or the other and being in that gray area is very very difficult for a lot of people, um, myself included. I can never go to the extreme, you know, for a long time all of us who have bariatric surgery were on the extreme of um, being morbidly obese. And when you have the opportunity to change that, um, a lot of people, a majority of people end up with cross addictions so that they are no longer eating themselves through their problems or drinking, their shopping, their sex addiction, their, or multiple, their shopping, their spending money. Um, or, you know, sometimes, like I said, it's multiple, multiples of those. Um, and some of people go to the extreme of diet and exercise to the point to where it's just, that is your whole life is controlling your food, controlling your exercise. And that's not something that I'm willing to do because I don't feel that that's realistic. And I don't want to spend my whole life being obsessed with food because I've already been on that. I've already done that. Um, maybe not to the same, um, with the same mentality, obviously, but I, I just can't imagine my life being revolving around food, even on the restrictive side. So that being said, um, I never really changed my eating habits. I just changed the quality or the qu quantity of the food that I was eating. Um, even now, since the revision that I had last June, in June of 2014, I had the revision because I lost all sense of restriction, and that should not have happened. So the revision was necessary because of a medical failure. Um, I'm not saying that I didn't play a role in that because I probably did kind of take it for granted that I had surgery and kind of 
ate more than I should have, but I was eating to the point of being full, which is what most of us do. And even when I was monitoring what I was eating, I was able to eat more and more and more and more and more because I never had a lot of restriction to begin with. So I did have the revision for medical reasons. Um, now it's a year and it's like 14 months later. Um, I still have a lot of restriction. I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, I eat probably about 16 to 1800 calories a day. And that to me is an insane amount of calories. Now to, to pre up Jennifer, 3000 calories was an average day. Um, and that's kind of what I'm getting at now is I'm only eating 16 to 1800 calories a day. If I'm really like bad, I might eat 2000, 2100, but that's a really rare amount of calories for me to eat. So on average, it's 16 to 1800 calories. The problem is, is that most of those calories are car or not carbs. Well, some carbs and mostly sugar. I do make sure to get my protein in and I am conscious of how much fluid I'm drinking. Um, and emphasis on fluid, not so much water. I drink a lot of tea, decaffeinated tea. I drink a lot of decaffeinated tea, so much so that I make it a gallon at a time and I go through a gallon every two days. Um, but even with that, the frozen Cokes are such an addiction for me still that um, all attempts for me to kind of minimize it have, I don't want to say failed, but it's just so much more difficult than I thought. The frozen Cokes serve a lot of purposes for me, and it may sound insane, but they're kind of my addiction. Um, I can go without junk food in the house for a few days. You know, I don't binge eat anymore necessarily, but the frozen Cokes, I just can't stop for some reason. And number one, it calms my anxiety. I have no idea why, but it really does calm my anxiety. I feel fuller when I have them because of all the carbonation. They taste really, really good. The caffeine helps me get through the day because I'm so tired all the time. Um, there's just a lot of benefits to drinking it. And when I don't have it, you know, I get really, really anxious. Um, I, I'm preoccupied with the thought of having one and where can I go to get one and how am I going to have money to get one? It's ridiculous. It's like, it is severely an addiction. Um, so that being said, me having two of those a day, every day, um, obviously is going to lead to some weight gain. The issue that I'm having is, um, or the, the, the thing that I'm not understanding is how I've gained so much weight in a year. I've gained 30 pounds in a year. My After my revision, I got down to 198. Um, I don't know if I was there for very long, <laughs> but I do remember the scale said 198, and I got on the scale like several times because I couldn't believe what it was saying. So I got down to 198. I am, as of today, 228. Um, I have seen as high as 230, um, but I'm averaging about 228. Um, so that's a 30 pound weight gain in a year after gastric bypass and um, omitting bread and pasta from my diet. I don't, if I eat a hamburger, I just, I don't eat the bun. Um, in the past, I don't know, three or four months, I have gone back to eating some bread and some pasta. Um, so it's not, on, it's not like if you see me eating spaghetti, I'm not going to beat myself up for a week. Um, because the fact is I still can't eat a lot. Um, even when I do eat like a sub and I have the bread, I may get a six inch and a sub and I'm only going to be able to eat about four inches of it because it's just, um, it's too much food. So it's not like I'm eating an absorbent amount of food, um, an absorbent amount of food. It's just, I guess that's why I don't understand why I'm gaining so much weight. Um, because it's not a matter of, I'm not active and I'm overeating and, you know, or I might, or that I'm eating more than I have in the past. I'm actually eating less than I was prior to my revision. Um, and the only thing I can think of is a, a lot of it is sugar. Um, I do still have a protein shake every morning for breakfast because I can't tolerate food in the morning. It makes me sick. So I do have a protein shake in the morning for breakfast. Um, and I don't want to skip meals. So I do have a protein shake in the morning for breakfast. Um, 
my heaviest meal of the day is typically lunch and then dinner is not a big deal and then I'll sometimes have soup before I go to bed just because I'm hungry before I go to bed. Um, it's just the problem of the sugar, that I'm eating a lot of sugar, I think. Um, but on top of that, I have major hormonal issues. Um, my hormones are all out of whack and I don't know if that's gotten worse and that's why I'm regaining the weight or and I'm almost positive it's not a thyroid issue. Um, I'm just not really sure why it is and I go to the doctors a lot and I have multiple doctors. Um, my psychiatrist just put me on Zoloft for my anxiety and my depression because my bipolar is being treated very well by Lamictal um, but I was having days where my depression was getting worse and my anxiety has been horribly bad so he put me um, on the Zoloft because I was having panic attacks to the point where I actually took myself to the hospital because I was thar I was convinced I was having a heart attack. Um, I've had EKGs, I've had echocardiograms because my chest pains have been so bad that I've been thinking I have heart problems. So he did put me on the Zoloft. I went off of that as of yesterday because it was making me so depressed that I was willing to quit my job and just stay in bed all day and not care about anything. And that's not like me. Um, so chemically, I know that I'm there's something going on hormonally I know that there's something going on I have PCOS and I don't I'm on medication for some of it but um, I'm just regaining at a major rate and it is scary and I've looked into seeing um, going to a specialist for food addiction and for eating disorders um, at an actual center in Royal Oak Michigan um, they have an inpatient and an outpatient, and I want to do the outpatient. Um, and my insurance will pay for the outpatient, but it will not pay to see the dietitian or the nurse practitioner. Um, those are to see them, which is a mandatory part of the problem, uh, part of the treatment. I'm sorry, is $195 for each of them. So that's $400 right there. And then my follow-ups for the dietitian, which are once a week, are $95 a piece, and it ain't happening. Um, so. I don't know. Um, I also know that I'm very stressed out, which is probably not helping. Um, so I'm just, the weight gain is real, and I cannot believe that I've gained 30 pounds in a year. But I thought about it the other day, and I'm like, holy crap, I did. So, um, and that is going to kind of lead into this next thing. Um, it has come to my attention, I, I really didn't even know if I wanted to address this or not, but it, it was bothering me, so I'm going to. It has come to my attention that someone in this community who is instrumental in uh, orchestrating and the meet and greets um, has, about a year ago after my revision, uh, was watching my videos, which is fine. I know that this person watches my videos on occasion. Um, we were friends on Facebook, and I friends on uh, Facebook um, for a while, on and off. Um, but they were watching my videos and then going onto Facebook and wrote some kind of negative status about my addiction to frozen coke. And it, I don't even know what the status said. I didn't ask. Um, but I know that they watched my video and then went onto Facebook and made some criticisms of me on their Facebook page. Um, I don't know. Um, why this person did what they did. I know that this person has issues with binge eating. I know that this person has regained some weight. I know this person has um, suffered some loss in their life in regards to their relationship, which was very, very important to them. Um, obviously, all of our relationships are important to us. Um, but A, um, it's hurtful to me that anybody would watch my videos and extract negative from that and then exploit that on a social networking site, especially when these blogs are supposed to be for a sense of community and a sense of support. And I make these blogs solely so that you can learn from them. So I can be an honest example of my journey. And I obviously am aware that some people can make them out to be whatever they want, but my intentions have always been pure and, um, I'm very raw and I'm very honest and I do that with the expectation that you will learn from me or that you will be able to relate to me. Um, 
and that you will have a sense of um, camaraderie and support with me. And I never really thought that as an adult I would have to worry about um, somebody exploiting my sensitivities and my vulnerabilities. I never thought that I'd have to deal with that on here. But apparently, especially from somebody in the community who has their own issues, like I never thought that that would happen. We all know what it's like to be made fun of, and we all know what it's like to um, be persecuted by somebody else because of our weight or because of our issues. And so it's it was hurtful to me to know that this person did this. Um, on the flip side, I feel bad for them because that is a lot of issues to go through. and. In a way, it was kind of flattering because obviously they see me as having some kind of strength or um, having some kind of um, being better in some way, maybe being more honest or I, I don't know what how they see me, but obviously they saw me in some kind of way to where they thought it was okay for them to try to knock me down by focusing on my issues, which would then distract from theirs. Um, and if that's what you need to do in order to feel like a grown man or woman, I'm not going to say gender or names, um, then more power to you, but that's extremely hurtful and juvenile. And you really should be ashamed of yourself that you handled yourself in that way, that you would ever think of criticizing another person, um, especially somebody in this community and especially somebody who has issues like you do. Um, I'm just really sorry that your life has fallen apart to the levels that it has, and I'm sorry that you're internalizing that in the way that you are. Um, I would appreciate the apology. I don't expect one. Um, but I just think it's really petty. And um, I encourage all of us to be pillars of support for one another and to not use this medium um, as a source of exploitation of people's vulnerabilities because it takes a lot to come on to YouTube and to put these videos out there and anybody in the world can watch them including our employers, our family, people we haven't talked to since high school, um, people who've never met us and to put yourself out there like that and to have people who you personally know because you've met them in person and you've met them because they've had the same surgery and then to find out that they betrayed you in that way is um, hurtful but also ridiculous. So we should be supporting one another, not bashing each other down. And that's not hippie talk. That's not, you know, you know, uh, wishful thinking. That's just how it should be because we know what we go through. So um, all that being said, that's my video. Um, I guess I can do a body shot because I haven't done a body shot in a while. Um, but I have my work clothes on, so you can't really tell, I guess. And I can't move because my couch is moving. But, so, I'm like, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I guess, like, do that, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. Um, Sorry, my couch is in the way and I can't move my camera. Um, so yeah, I'm at 228. Um, I was fine at 210. If I could just back to 210, I'd be cool. I'd be totally accepting of that as long as that was a long-term thing. It's just the fact that it's never... I don't know. I just can't seem to find my happy place, I guess. I've always fluctuated within like five pounds of the week before. And I don't know why that is, other than to say it's hormonal. Um, maybe some genetics, um, and obviously bad eating. Um, but I'm very active, so lately I've been sleeping a lot. And I think that's partially due to my depression. But um, I don't think that I'm so inactive or that I'm overeating so much that I should have gained 30 pounds in a year. And I guess that's probably what I should have said. So at any rate, I don't know what I'm going to do from now. Um, the only positive from the Zoloft is I didn't really feel like eating, um, but that's because I didn't feel like doing anything <laughs> um, except sleeping, so they took me off that. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. I'm sorry this video still ended up being 20 minutes. Um, 
I will talk to you guys all soon. I hope that you are doing well. Um, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, please put them below. Uh, I have a lot of new subscribers all of a sudden. I don't know why everybody... I've had a lot in the past two weeks, and I don't know if, like, YouTube is promoting my videos more. I, I don't know what the deal is, but welcome. Thank you for watching, um, especially when it's at the 20-minute mark. Um, and if you have any questions or anything that you want to ask me, um, whatever, I'm here. I will answer. Um, other than that, I will talk to you all soon. Have a great week, um, and I will talk to you hopefully by September. Um, talk to you then. Bye-bye.